I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. My name is Esther Lee, president of the Bethlehem NAACP. On my left is Lance Wheeler, president of the Eastern NAACP. The Allen Down president is, is expected to arrive at any moment. But today we assemble, and I thank you for being here, for our brother, George Floyd, who was really murdered in front of our eyes last week at the hands of police. That officer who had no remorse but kept his knee on Floyd's neck for eight plus minutes, 8.46 in fact. Reverend Sharpton in a deliverance the other day had the audience hold them, just keep quiet for eight plus 46 minutes. And the feeling that I sat and deliberated on in that was just beside, I was beside myself. Went back to the days of slavery when we couldn't do anything. Blacks could almost <coughs> just not show up, it would have been better, you know, black men, couldn't look at white women. You know, we've come a long way. Can hold their hands now. So be careful. Basic problem. And what we're gonna do here in Bethlehem is help to correct this problem of racism as we move forward. Yeah. We're not gonna do any more, any more hand holding. Our systems, our businesses, I'm starting to notice on you. We're not going to do any more favoritism. You won't have a chance to pick the black person you want to serve in any particular position. You know, you're going to take the person that's qualified. And every black man doesn't look alike. Just look around beside you, and, and it ain't through the mask as many as you can see it. Every black man, every black woman doesn't look like me. And every black woman in a hat doesn't look like me. <laughs> but that poor brother and son of mine, it would be a son of mine, that lay calling for his mother, just reminded me of Christ on the cross. And his deliberations, crying out, and he was not heard. But, so as we get moving here today, I'm thankful for our NACPs who have gathered uh, here because we're denouncing, we're denouncing in fact, the police actions of others throughout the, uh, the country and other cities, the cities surrounding cities. Lance and I will talk about what goes on in Easton. Uh, I'm not so blinded. I almost know what goes on. And in Allentown, same thing. You know, we don't live so far apart. But we're going to come together and we are going to be speaking out about the services, the problem services generated by our police department. And there's some things we're going to be asking for. Our national NACP has alerted us as writers what we should request from our police department. I was always taught by my grandfather, same game, different set of rules for us. Okay? That was embedded in my heart and I live that every day. And it's sad I got to go out and try to teach my son that he has to worry about other things rather than just being a human being. What's brought up on the house is we have to watch what we do because they look at us different every day. We talk about equal, if we look at the pen dots on the highways and you look at some of these big corporations, how many people of color do you see out there? I was once told by a guy that works for a city a suburban water company, I said, well why isn't there people of color on there? You know what he said to me? Where we can't stand cold. And I said to him, I go ice fishing every year with George Floyd. When that guy was on his neck and the officers stood around, you seen what they were, six months, two years on the force, okay? The reason why is because if they would have reacted and got George off them, after they went back to the station, they all three would have been fired, okay? Why? Because it's the good old boy system. 
Okay? And the truth is, they don't want to understand that. Look in Buffalo. 57 officers resigned because they pushed a 75 year old guy down on the ground and he, his ears started bleeding. So 57 of their, their tactics officers respond, uh, retired. Why? Because they still don't see the change. Okay? 57 of them, not one state and said, nope, it was wrong. 57, the whole department resigned. What's that tell you? They still think it was okay. And it was, oh, I was following orders. I'm just following orders. Well, when do orders change? Because I can't live like that if I see something done. Okay, that's what change has to come. We have to stand up and speak and say, you know what? What I said to an average guy, did you ever sit down and break bread with a black man and know what we, we talk about? Or how we eat or how we live? We don't live no different. But one thing, when you die, you don't come back. George is dead. You can replace a car, you can replace a building, you can replace a city. You can't replace a human life. And that needs to stop. The police officers, we are not turning around and going anywhere no more. It's time for change. And we need to start now. And don't forget. When you have to tell your child at seven years old, your black child, you have to start telling them when they, nearly when they're born, that you are different, that you have a different code by which you operate. That's sad. We came to America as victims, black people. We didn't come, we're brought here. Ever since, from victims to villains, I'm disheartened and dismayed at these repeated conversations that we have to say about humanizing other people. It is disrespectful, it's immoral, and it's irresponsible for a country not to respect all its citizens. You know, we're talking about changing, policing, Let's let's get straight. Let's 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 not be let's be real. You can't defund police officers because you defund police officers, you got the military. You got to move from being militarized to becoming civilianized. We had this, this program called community policing. Community policing was a program where the officer had to get out of that car that you pay for and get into the community and shake hands and work and solve problems in the community. That's how we're going to change this. We can't have them drive around in those $40,000 cars, air conditioned, and put a barrier between us. So let's get those folks out of the cars. Let's get our, our administrators, local, county, state, and federal, on the process. You drive the process. They're not going to do anything. You drive the process because you're the voters. Young people, hold on. Listen to what's being said because it's not over. And we're done dying. We're done dying. We've got to acknowledge that there is spiritual wickedness in this United States of America. It came here from Europe. It came here from other countries. They brought their work to the land that they wanted to be the best. It is here today. And the late President Lyndon Bain Johnson said, the sin of America is that the poorest, uneducated white person will feel that they are superior to any black person educated or economically superior over them simply because of the color of their skin. Beloved of God, it was going on then, and it's still going on now. Who is fanning the flames of racism? It's certainly not me. But when the con when the color of my skin becomes probable cause for me being stopped, frisked, and arrested, and somebody putting their knee in my back, I know that it's not a flesh and blood thing. We are standing here today against oppression. We are standing here today against knees in our back. We are standing here today against policing rather than protection. We are standing here today, black, white, brown, and otherwise. I don't know what kind of copper tone you're using, but some of you look pretty good. So today, that to my elected officials, it's good to see you on days like this. But remember, you have a house of worship that you are associated with. 
You shouldn't be there simply on high occasions such as this or for a photo op or a gathering. You've got to remember that it was not just the people in your church, in your chapel, in your synagogue that elected you. It took a cross section of the population to elect you. You are to show up in your house of worship, but you also are to show up in other people's house of worship. How can you be cruel to people when you recognize their faces, you know their names, and you rub shoulders with them? Remember to my, uh, uh, those of you who are wearing the uniform of the city, the people who are gathered here pay taxes that pay your salary. We are going to sing one verse of We Shall Overcome, and then we're going to have silence for eight minutes. Don't move. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you for coming.